Hey guys, it's Ecomacy Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the augmented reality racing game that we started a couple of weeks ago. In this video I'm going to show you what you see playing behind the scenes, which is basically a demo of what we're going to be doing by the end of this video. We're going to be creating a retycle, we're going to be drawing that in Photoshop. Once we have it in Photoshop, we're going to be bringing it into Unity. I'm also going to show you how we can create a new texture, how we can create a material that is going to work with the retycle that we're going to be creating. Once we have that, I'm going to be implementing a new retycle feature that is going to allow us to collide with a mesh. So there's a lot to do in this video. I'm really excited about it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to create a retycle so that we can place the car, we can place different targets. So to do that, I'm going to go into Photoshop. We're going to go into New, and I'm going to create an image that is 500 by 500. And you don't need to use Photoshop. I'm just used to using Photoshop. You can use any type of editing tool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my ellipse tool and I'm just going to create an ellipse that is about the size of my canvas. So I'm going to just going to change it to white. Then we can do something, something like that. And what I need to do as well, I think I'm just going to not fill it. And we're just going to keep the borders. I think the borders of 50 px is more than enough. And then we can just, you know, place place it in an area where we're covering most of the most of the canvas, so I can just do that. And then what I'll do is I'll go into my rectangle tool and I'm going to do something similar. Just make sure that the, you know, the stroke is set to white and which it is. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple lines. Let me try this. Okay, there we go. Let's do it one more time. So I'm going to do, we're going to be creating a plus symbol. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And then we'll just place it right in the middle. I'll just duplicate that layer and then I'll just, I'll just rotate it. And this is just a very simple version of a, of a retycle, but I think that's going to, that's going to work for us. And then we can just say circle, we can just say line, and we can keep everything, you know, everything nice and clean. And then what I'll do is I'll go into my, my project and just make sure that I have that in my texture. So I'm going to go into asset, textures, and then in here, I'm just going to be re re renaming this to retycle. Go ahead and hit save. We can close out of this. We don't need that anymore. Let's wait until Unity loads the texture. Looks like it already loaded it. And then I'm going to go into Editor, GUI, and Legacy. Let's go ahead and hit Save. And you can see that now we can see the, the retycle. But we're going to be creating a, a new plane that is going to be holding that, basically a material that is associated with that. So to do that, I'm going to create a, a new 3D object, go into Plane. And it's going to be very, very big. So we're just going to do, let's do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0.1. I think, in fact, I think I'm just going to do, there we go, 0 0.035, 0 0.035, 0 0.035. Yeah, I think that's the size that I was going to use. And then we're just going to center that right in the middle. I think that works great. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to call it retycle, just to make sure that it is, you know, it is, that's going to be the object that we're going to be using. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into materials and then let's create a new material here. Also going to be calling it retycle. Let's go ahead and associate it with the object. And right now it, it's, it's just not right, correct? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's go ahead and change it to transparent. I'm going to change the base material here, the base map. And this is going to be a retycle. And you guys can see that now we have a really cool retycle that it's what you saw at the beginning of this video. And, you know, we can, as we're using it with leader, it's going to be rotating and basically it's going to allow us to place the objects at the desired position. Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new prefab on the resources. The reason that I'm going to put it on the resources is because we're going to be using resources to load it in runtime. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it here. And that should be everything that we need to do for the retycle since we're going to be doing this programmatically. We're going to go into the code and implement the actual placement of the retycle. So go ahead and go here. And you guys can see that I have a node in here to be implemented. I did this on purpose. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a private variable. It's gonna be constant, a string. I'm gonna be calling this raycast layer. And this is gonna be the, the name of the layer that we're gonna be colliding with. So if you remember from the previous video, I created one called AR Mesh Lighter. And that's the one that we're going to be only colliding with if we want to place an object. So that way, if we have a mesh that is generated by the lighter, then we can, you know, we can actually place that. 
And then I'm going to create a, a new object, which is going to be place object state. I'm just going to, I'll show you what that is. And then this is going to be called place object. I'll just create a new instance of that. And if we look at that, it's actually a pretty simple object. It's going to go ahead and pick the definition. It's going to hold the, the actual prefab that we're going to be instantiating a player item. I'm going to be covering that on the next video. It's basically an inventory item. And then the object that we're going to be instantiating, it could be a car, it could be a target, which I, I am calling a flag. So I'll show you that and, and how that's going to work in a, in a future video. For now, just know that that's going to hold some information for us. I also added a vector three and that vector three, it's going to hold an offset. The reason for an offset is if we, for whatever reason, we want to, you know, raise the location of the, of the retire, retitle then we can, we, can, we can do that. Let's say that we're colliding with the mesh and we want to raise that a little bit more, then you know, we could do that as well with that. I'm just going to set it to a vector 3.0. Then I'm going to be creating a new Unity event. So let's go ahead and do a Unity event. We need to be bringing in our namespace. This is going to be executed whenever we, we place the object. So it's going to say on object, place, and then it's going to create a new one of those. So when we place an object, we can do basically whatever we want. And I'll just show you what I'm doing for that. That could be, you know, as soon as you place an object, you may want to notify something that we already placed that object. So we want to place the next one. So you can use it in many different ways. It's basically just an event. And then I also need a reference to the camera because we're going to be using the, the viewpoint at the middle of the camera to determine, you know, where we're going to be doing the ray cast from. So it's going to set it to no. And then I'm also going to be needing the actual retycle that we're going to be placing. So I'm just going to do game object and then custom retycle. I have a hard, a hard time with that name for some reason. And then what I'll do is I'll just, you know, do the awake method here. And in the awake method, we need to get a reference to the camera. So I'm just going to do find objects of type. And this is pretty safe because we only have one camera in the scene. So we can just do that. I'm also need to, I need to load the custom retycle. Remember, if we go back into Unity, I put it on the resources and then prefab and retycle. So this is where we're going to be loading that. So it's going to do custom retycle and I'm going to create a new instance. That new instance is going to get loaded from the resources. So it's going to do load. We're going to be doing a generic. So the generic is going to be a game object. And then I'm just going to say, you know, I want to load these from prefabs. And then the name is going to be retycle just semicolon at the end. And then I want to make sure that this retycle is positioned correctly. And also it's going to be, you know, at the location of, of the object of this object. So I'm just going to do parent and then I'm just going to do a transform. So that's going to make this object that I'm creating a child of, of the, of the AR placement retycle. Okay. So now what I need to do is I'm going to, I'm going to hide it to begin with because we don't know if we have, you know, collided with the mesh just yet. So that's, that's going to make sure that I do instantiate it, but we don't show it just yet. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to implement what we're going to be doing in the update method. So in the update method, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking for placement object. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that we don't do anything else. Or we don't allow the user to place anything else once the placement has occurred. So what I'll do is if the placement has been instantiated, we can just go ahead and return. Otherwise, we're going to start capturing and, and doing a ray casting. So I'm going to say AR camera. I'm going to do my viewport array. This is going to allow us to start from the middle of the, basically the, the middle position of the camera. So I'm going to do 0.5F, comma, 0.5F, and then comma, it's going to be, we don't really care about Z at this point, so we can just do Z is going to be zero. So now that we have a ray that is going to be basically at the, at the, at the middle of the screen, we can do also a check and make sure that we have hit the, the collider. So what I'm going to do for that is we're going to be using physics and then I'm just going to do a ray cast and then we're going to be passing in the ray. Once we pass in the ray, we're going to get it. We're going to try to get a hit. So we're going to just create a new instance variable type hit. Well, it's going to be a var and it's going to, the type of this, let's see if we can, if we do a comma here, it's going to be, if I go up, and it's going to be a raycast hit object. That's the problem with doing vars. Whenever you do vars, you get used to not worrying about 
what's happening. And then I'll just do a flow and positive infinity. We don't really care right now about the distance. And then I'm going to say layer mass and we're going to be getting our mass. So the mass that we're going to be using to basically do the collision is we're only going to be looking for, you know, any time, anything that has that layer. So we're going to get a mass of that layer. And then if we have a head, then we know that we can also place or recycle appropriately. So I'm just going to say has hit and go ahead and try that one more time. So here we're going to do a custom recycle. At this point, we know that we're hitting a mesh. So I'm just going to set my recycle equal to true. I'm also going to be changing the position. So I'm just going to say transform that position and I'm going to, I'm going to get the point and then we can add or offset if we, you know, if we had a, an offset. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be adding one, but if you want to use it, you can do that. And then I also need to basically position this correctly. So I'm going to do, this is going to be up and I'm going to set, I'm going to use the normals to position this, you know, on that, in that direction. Okay. So now that we have that, we're going to have to create a new method to basically do our, our placement. So I'm just going to call it place object. That's going to be our method name. And then in this one, we're going to be passing in the hit point. So it's going to say hit that point. We haven't implemented it yet, but we'll play, we'll implement it in just a second here. So I'm going to call it place object and then we can just go ahead and comment it out. Okay. So let's go ahead and work on that. So it's going to be private void place object and it's going to be taking a hit that point, which is a vector three. And it's going to be the location where we're going to be doing the placement. So here we're going to be doing a lot of things. And one of those things is going to be det detecting touches. So I'm going to say active touches and then unity, unity engine. And then this is going to be our input system. Remember we're using the new input system and then enhance touch. And in this case, we're going to be using the touch. So let's go ahead and grab the touch. And then we need to get our active touches. And I did this on a previous video, so it's going to be very similar to that code. Active touches that count greater than zero. And then we're going to be getting the first touch because we only need the first touch to determine at what point we're going to be placing this object. And this is just my implementation, right? You can change these however you, you know, however you like it. And then I also want to check if we're over the UI and I'm going to say touch and we're going to be getting the screen position. And then I also need to know if we're over a UI object. So if we are, we don't want to do anything. So I'm just going to do if we're over UI, then we're just going to be returning. That way we don't allow anybody touching, you know, a button and the button is going to trigger a placement and we don't want that to happen. Okay. So now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be checking for my touch and the touch has a face. So this is very common and we're going to be doing unity. I think if I do this again, it's going to auto complete. There we go. So if the touch begin, then we know that we are starting. Then the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that we haven't actually placed an object. So I'm just going to say place object that's not equal to null. So if it's not null, it actually has already been, you know, it has already been instantiated. So I'll just do place object that's not equal null. And then we're just going to be doing an end here. And then I'm going to be using my place object and placement. And we want to make sure that this one is null because I don't want to allow instantiating multiple objects because otherwise we're going to have multiple cars and we're going to have multiple targets, but this is going to be one per target. So I'll be instantiating new objects of this type to handle that. Okay. So now that we have that, so we check and we, we check the place object is not null and place object that placement equal null. Then I know that I can create a new placement. So I'm just going to say placement equal and we're just going to do instantiate and in instantiate, I'm going to be needing the actual prefab. So it's going to do prefab. I'm going to be passing the location that we are, you know, we're recasting with. And then I also need to pass in a quaternion. So I'm just going to do identity. So now that we have that, I'm just going to do a placement object and then placement. And I also need to put this in the, you know, as a child of this transform. So I'm just going to do that similar to what we did above it. I'm also just going to do logger that instance just so that we have more information to basically to display. So it's going to do instance and then we're going to be logging info. We can just say object created so that I know on the UI that we, we created that. I also need to find out if this is a car that we're placing. So I'm just going to say car controller 
placement object, placement, and then get component in children, car controller, and there we go. So if this is a car controller, I basically need to bind the player input controller so that we can control this car. If it's not a car controller, then we don't really need to worry about it. So it's going to say, if it's not null, then I know that I need to bind my, basically the input so that I can control the car, like I said. And then I'm going to use my player input instance that bind. And I'm going to be binding this car controller. Okay, so that's how I'm hooking up these two together. Otherwise, then we don't really need to do anything there. And the next thing that I need to do is I need to get the collision object. So I'm going to do target collision state. And then this is going to be mainly for future videos. I'll explain to you how, how this works. Just know that we're going to be creating a retycle and it's going to be instantiating, instantiating these objects correctly. It's getting a couple of things here set up. And then stay, I also need to do my player item, place object, player item. So the reason that I'm doing this is so that I know, you know, with what object I'm colliding with so that I can, I can determine if, you know, if the car is colliding with that object, I know that I'm going to get a point and basically we can win by colliding, by, by actually colliding with multiple targets. That's how the game is going to be, is you instantiate a car. Once the car is instantiated, I'm going to be instantiating multiple targets. When the car reaches, you know, every single one of those targets, we're basically going to tell the player that we have one. The reason what I'm passing in the inventory item is so that when the car collides with the, with the target, we know which inventory item we need to basically provide a point to. And then that way we know, you know, what, what things we have collected already. Okay. So now that we have that and I got that out of the way, I need to actually call my, my unity event. And then I'm also going to be using an, a null operator here, just in case you don't want to use that. We don't get a null, nullable exception. And then the next thing that I need to do is I need to set my, my actual custom retycle to false so that we don't show it. And that's basically everything that we need to do there. And then of course I need to uncomment this. So let me go ahead and give you a walkthrough of, of this, just, you know, kind of explaining how this, how all these things are going to come together. So the variables here, the ray cast is so that we can collide with a specific layer on the mesh. This is so that we can store information about the placement, the prefab, and also the inventory item. This is an offset that we can offset the, the retycle. So if we want to raise it above the ground, that we can do that. If we want to offset it on X or Z, you can also do that. This is so that we can execute basically in some sort of action after we place an object. The camera, I need it because we need to get the middle point of the camera so that we can do basically do array. And this is going to be the retycle that we're going to be creating. So the awake method just basically setting a couple of variables, including retycle, reference to the camera, the update method I'm using so that we can, you know, we don't, we're not going to be allowing creating array after we have a placement because there's no reason for that. Once I, once I check for that, I'm basically going to get the, the location of the AR camera at the middle point. And then I'm going to be doing a raycast. If we did do a raycast and the raycast is against the mesh, then I know that I can instantiate, basically enable, not instantiate, but uh, set the, the visibility on the customer retackle to true. I'm also going to be changing the position. I'm also going to be changing, you know, the, the direction. And then I'm also going to be calling the place object, which is basically going to be doing my touch detection and also the placement of the different objects. So now that I have that, I'm going to go back into an object that you haven't looked at, which I call the player mission manager. And this is the one that is responsible for, you know, determining how many missions we're going to have, and then basically checking the state of the mission. For now, just know that it is there. I'm going to explain it to you in the next video. And I'm also going to be uncommenting, uncommenting a couple of things in here, because just without knowing everything that is happening in here, just know that at this step, it's what it's going to determine, you know, what type of placement we have, we have executed. So let's say that we haven't placed the car. So it's going to go through here and say, okay, we haven't really placed the car. So we're going to be placing the car. We're going to be creating a, a game object. We're going to be creating a retycle, which at that point is going to be calling the code that we have here. So it's going to start placing the retycle in at the location that you're recasting. And then once we, once we have that, done that, and the object has been placed, 
we know I just basically changed the state of the current step so that I know that a current object is being placed in on the next iteration, on the next step, it's gonna say, okay, now that I place a car, I need to place a target. So it's gonna go through these multiple times. So if I go into Unity, and this is just, you know, a sneak peek of what I'm gonna be showing you on the next video. I have this player mission and it's basically a, a scriptable object. So I could create another mission if I wanted to. Let's say on the first mission, I may have, you know, seven different items. The first one, of course, is gonna be a car. I also have a priority, a minimum distance, which I need to implement. The placement is state, which in this case, it should be set to no set because I haven't really, we haven't really placed the car just yet. So, and then the number one is gonna be the flag, the same, same, you know, same way. If we have multiple flags, we can have, you know, as many flags as we need to. That way, if we have, you know, if we wanna have more advanced levels when, where we have, you know, a flag, uh, basically one meter away from the car, maybe another flag three meters away, we can do that and we can do a lot of cool things like we may want to have a flag that is above the car so we need to have a ramp that the car needs to go through anyways there's a lot of things that we can do with these missions for now i'm just going to keep it simple and that's basically everything that i wanted to show you and if you guys have any other questions please let me know in the comments thank you guys